standing for the reading of God's word. First Samuel chapter three, one through 10. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we have a special guest, Dr. David Emanuel Goatley, president of Fuller Theological Seminary here with us to, to uh, deliver the word. And I want to say a little bit about Fuller Seminary. Uh, Tammy and I are both alumni of Fuller Theological Seminary, which is based out of Pasadena, California and Los Angeles. Also, Paul Hayden, uh, the founding pastor here, Steve Weber, all uh, uh, Fuller alum. And the reason I went to Fuller was because I had mentors who had gone there, and I really respected them and the ministry that they were involved in. And so I, uh, that was my natural choice, was to select Fuller as my a place of theological education. I also loved, the reason I cho chose Fuller was because it, of the amount of denominations, Christian denominations represented in the student body. Over a hundred denominations were represented within the student body at Fuller. So I was studying theology next to not just Presbyterians, but Episcopalians and Methodists and uh, Lutherans and non people of non-denominational folk and uh, Foursquare Church and Assemblies of God and all, all sorts of Christian traditions, which enrich in my theological education. Also, within the student body, there were over 100 nations represented from around the globe. And so to be able to study from, with somebody from South Korea or um, Europe or Africa or South America, Central America, was amazing and added to the rich experience that I had. Um, so we are so fortunate to have uh, Dr. Goatley. Uh, his wife, Pamela, is here, and also uh, Dasha Thomas, who works with um, Fuller. And we're just grateful that you're here, that you're able to visit with us. And um, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the kind introduction, and we are grateful, um, Pastor Ben, Pastor Tammy, and for all who have um, blessed us with a spirit of hospitality. Um, for a while, I, a couple of decades, I was uh, somewhat of an itinerant preacher. I led a global mission society, so week after week, I would 
travel and uh, do workshops in churches and to preach and try to help persuade people that missions is essential to the Christian life and the Christian church. And uh, on occasion, I would uh, visit a congregation and I'd be a stranger when I arrived. I'd be a stranger while I was there and I'd be a stranger when I left. And unless the Lord forced me, I promised I'd never go back anymore. But it's just been such a joy to experience the spirit of hospitality uh, that is a part of this congregation. And uh, we are grateful uh, to have been welcomed and uh, with warmth and with the love of Christ. And it is a sign that people know the Lord when they know how to extend hearts and hands uh, to people they've not met before. Uh, the hymn writer Doris Akers penned a song that had the words, there is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. And so we are grateful to be here with you. As Pastor Ben mentioned, my wife Pamela uh, is here, and uh, some of your warm congregants um, get, took her out fly fishing. And um, we, I'm, I'm a country mouse. She's a, I'm a city mouse. She's a country mouse. And um, she, she hadn't been able to go fishing for a long time, running around the country with her husband. And so uh, this was a, a good experience. So we are grateful for that. Thankful for my colleague, Dasha Thomas, uh, who is with the Fuller Foundation and uh, helps to um, help people understand how they might be able to invest in the kingdom's work uh, today and tomorrow. So we are grateful uh, to be here and with you today. We've been blessed by the ministry of music and spirit of worship. Uh, and thank God for you uh, and for this time together. You've heard the reading of the word, and I invite you to gather with me around for these few preaching moments around uh, the subject, Somebody is Calling Your Name. One responsibility of Christian congregations is to help notice name and nurture people in the lives of their congregations who might have an inclination toward ministry. All of us need people who can see in our lives what we may not be able to see within our own lives. Perhaps you have had experiences in your life where someone was able to see a possibility in you, see an ability in you, and be able to name it even when you were denying it or before you were ready to, to comprehend it. And that's a part of the lives of churches and a part of the partnership between churches and seminaries is both to help name, notice, name, and nurture people who may have an inclination to administer his vocation, and then to help them to try on the mantle of ministry, to see if it fits, and then to help invest and support them so that they're able uh, to focus on what God is calling them to do. And so we're grateful for, uh, in the life of this church, uh, collectively and individually, those who have been helping people to get ready for what God is calling them to do. And in a sense, that is a part of what this text inspires me to, to be reminded of. The text said that in, that in the days where we pick up that it was rare to hear from the Lord. So perhaps people were unaccustomed to hearing directly from the Lord. I have a friend who was an air traffic controller. He spent his career doing that. He retired. And then heard the Lord calling him uh, to, in that next phase of his life, 
give himself to minister his vocation. So he went to seminary, earned his Master of Divinity degree, and then he did his internship uh, under his pastor mentor. And then the Lord sent him and a congregation called him to be a lead pastor. And he was accustomed to paying attention, very close attention to details. It's helpful when air traffic controllers do that. And he was walking down the hall in this, con in, in this church where he newly had been called. Somebody called pastor and he kept walking. And they called again with a little more volume, pastor. He kept walking. And then even louder, they called pastor and called his name. And then he realized they were talking to him. He was not accustomed to being called and addressed as pastor. And he did not know somebody was calling his name. There's an old spiritual song that has these words. It says, hush, hush. Somebody's calling my name. Oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, what shall I do? Another verse says, can you hear it? Somebody's calling my name. And then there's a third verse that says, it sounds like Jesus. Somebody's calling my name. Oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, what shall I do? Somebody is calling our names as we seek to be faithful to the Lord. And as we explore some insights from this text, you may be like Samuel today. And you don't have to be a youngster to be like Samuel. Because God keeps on calling no matter where we are in whatever stage of life. Or you may be like Eli. Not that you have to lay down and you can't see very well anymore. But that you are the wise elder. Who helps somebody to discern. So sit in either place, in either seat today. As we explore this text. Samuel found himself in a place where it was possible for him to hear God. He was ministering in Eli with Eli. He was there at the place of the ark. He was not so encumbered by the noisiness of life or by the busyness of life that he could not hear. Many of us today live in the midst of a lot of noise. It may be the noise that is on the radio. It may be the noise in the television. It may be the noise of our friends. It may be the noise of the culture. It may be the noise of our so-called smart devices. And it's difficult to hear the quiet voice of God or it may be the noisiness of busy schedules appointments moving from one thing to another I was in seminary with a, a, a colleague from Nigeria and he said to me once he said Goatley you Americans don't know how to value time and I said okay what does that mean now, you may or may not agree with it, but it is worth thinking about. He said, you Americans value time for time's sake. So it's important for you to be on time for each appointment, and you will stop doing something important and meaningful just so that you can be on time to the next appointment that may have no meaning at all. He said, we value time by its usefulness. That if we're involved in an important conversation or important experience, then we don't end that important conversation or that experience just to make a schedule. 
Now that would be difficult for us to change given that most of our lives are built around schedules. But have you ever felt like you were running from one thing to the next and barely had time to catch your breath? So filled with the busyness of life that it's difficult to hear God calling your name. It's a challenge for us to build in to every day some time to sit quietly before the Lord, perhaps with the Lord's word or in meditation of during our weeks to be able to make time to carve out, to slow it down enough to just listen for the small voice of the Lord. The Lord does not always speak in the earthquake and in the fire. Sometimes it's in pure silence where we're able to hear the Lord calling our name. I encourage all of us to put ourselves with some regularity in a place where it's able for us to hear the Lord's voice. Not only was Samuel in a place where he could hear the Lord's voice when the Lord spoke, but he was also in proximity of a wise counselor who could help him discern what he was hearing. You heard it read for us so beautifully earlier that Samuel was lying down and he heard a voice, Samuel. And he goes to Eli and says, you called me. Here I am. And Eli says, I did not call you. Go lie down. A second time, he hears a voice, Samuel. He gets up. Here I am, Eli. You called me. And Eli says, I did not call you. Go lie down. Now, the text does not tell us what tone Eli used. Perhaps he would have been like some of us and gotten impatient. I told you I didn't call you. Perhaps I'm imposing too much on the text. A third time, he hears a voice. Samuel, he gets up and says to Eli, you called me. Here I am. And then Eli realizes what's going on and says, go lie down. But this time, this time, if you hear the voice again, this is how you answer. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Samuel knew something was going on, but he didn't quite know how to make sense of it. And I'm sure that all of us have been in places in our lives where we knew something was happening, but we just didn't know what was happening. Some of us may be feeling a, a urge or a tug or a voice or an opportunity that kept circling around, not quite sure what was happening or what was God saying. And we needed the voice of a wise counselor not to tell us what God was saying, but rather to help us to get in tune with who might be calling. And that is, a, that is a part of the call of every congregation to be able to carry ourselves and to identify people who have a gift of discernment, a gift of wisdom and knowledge and insight so that they can help us to hear, help us to discern, help us to discover this just might be the voice of the Lord calling me to try on a mantle of ministry, calling me to venture out into a place where I haven't gone before, calling me to try something new for the kingdom of God. So he listened to Eli. He went to lie down. And one more time, he heard a voice call his name. Aren't you grateful that God doesn't treat us with three strikes and you're out? Once again, he calls the name Samuel. And this time, Samuel follows 
the wisdom and the guidance of his wise elder, the wise counselor. And he says, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. But he got a message from the Lord that he probably had not banked on. If you keep on reading in chapter 3, you'll see that God told Samuel to tell Eli about a judgment that was coming because of the disobedience of people. It was a difficult message to deliver, so much so that when Eli said to Samuel, what did the Lord tell you? Eli could tell, this is some bad news. But he still said, tell me what the Lord said. And it was a word of, of judgment. Sometimes we have people who come to seminary and they're excited about answering God's call, excited about what the Lord is going to do, uncertain but excited at the same time. And then they get a call to ministry and then they run in head to headwinds and difficult days and tough decisions and then they wonder, what has God done to me? But part of life and part of Christian ministry is sometimes having to deliver a difficult word, a word of, of God's discipline and a word of God's direction that people may not be able to hear. Oh, but it is a joy to be able to be called, to be a part and invited in to decision points of people's lives, to walk with people in joy and the privilege of walking through sorrow. All of that is a blessing when God calls our name, but sometimes it's heavy lifting. But God calls people God can count on to do the heavy lifting by God's grace. But also, the text says, not only is Samuel given a difficult task, but it also says that God is with him for all his days. And so no matter what Samuel had to go through in all of his life and all of his service, whether it was difficult days or whether it was days that were easy, whether it was time of joy or sorrow, God was with him all of his days. And God is calling for some of us to be like Samuel, to say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And God is calling for some of us to be like Eli, the wise elder, to help people discern this might be the voice of God. And if God calls you again, answer. I began by sharing with you the verse of a spiritual song that said, hush, somebody is calling my name. And I'd like to leave you with the verses of another song, old song, that says, when he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If those who hear my voice open the door, I will come into them and eat with them, and they with me. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are all who find refuge in God. Please join me in uh, this responsive call.
call to the table, invitation to the table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, we do thank you that we are invited to this place, to this table at this time, that you have called our names and you receive us just as we are, not worthy, but welcomed. And we thank you that we have the opportunity to once again express our faith and our hope in you. We ask that you now bless us as we come forward because we know that you are our creator. You you created us out of your love. You have breathed your life into us. And so with all the people on earth and in the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Let us sing together. Blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made us new by your covenant, by water and the spirit. You commissioned us to be Christ's disciples to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. So today, as Christ's family in all the world, we join at his gracious table. For on the night on which our Lord gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many of the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these incredible acts in Jesus Christ, Lord, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Jesus' suffering and offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, Lord, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them for us, the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And renew our communion with you. Renew our communion with your church throughout the whole world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit, Lord, make us one in Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory 
and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father God, now and forever. Amen. Won't you please now join me in affirming our faith as we stand and recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated on the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the elders and deacons who are serving to come forward. Current, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the cup of salvation. Thanks be to God. Brad, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the Thanks cup of salvation. I'll do that one. Nancy, the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Bill, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. There you go. Get that over here in the corner there. Or, no, you guys are up here. Right next to them. This is uh, the Lord's table. This is not a Presbyterian table. This is uh, anyone who wants to receive Christ. Um, who puts their trust in the Lord, who wants to experience God's grace, come to the table. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. If you're sitting in these uh, sections here, you're going to come forward and up. And if you're on the, the ends, you're going to go towards the windows and the walls and up. Um, Tammy and I are also available for prayer, if anyone wants prayer. Come to the table.
Let's pray. Loving God, you graciously feed us who have received these holy mysteries with the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation. May we who have received this sacrament be strengthened in your service. We who have sung your praises tell of your glory and truth. We who have seen the greatness of your love see you face to face in your kingdom. For you have made us your own people by the death and resurrection of your Son, our Lord, and by the life-giving power of your Spirit. We now pray together as Jesus taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you please stand and we'll sing our closing song together.